So all in all, I owed, literally was crying and I literally felt like I was about to die. There's a huge expectation with everyone around to go back to school, finish your degree. Fun fact, I didn't know I had classes on Mondays till I went back to school. I didn't know because I was looking at the calendar view the whole time and on the calendar I was viewing a week that didn't have classes on Mondays so I didn't look closely enough. So the list view here would have told me that I had classes on Mondays but of course I didn't look at it enough. Um, I just usually looked at the calendar view and this is me after dropping my classes feeling stressed and not knowing what's to come. This is what the screen looked like right after I dropped my classes. So I went to school on August 27th on a Tuesday and then I also went the next day which was the 28th and after that on Thursday the 29th I did go to school but I didn't go to my classes. I went to a school. Um, first I went to the advisement office and I asked them what I was supposed to do. Um, I didn't end up seeing an advisor because they were so busy, so many people on the first couple days of school obviously and um, the lady there told me oh, what do I need and she directed me to like go to admissions and go to financial aid and so that's what I ended up doing I went to financial aid to talk about um, how it would affect my financial aid and I'll be talking about that later in the video um, I also went to admissions and the lady there told me um, I had to drop all of my classes and then email email the transfer admissions office that I was going to be leaving Baruch for this semester. For now, I'm just going to be talking about the tuition, liability, and refund. So tuition liability is when you drop your courses, you are still liable to pay a portion of your tuition and fees that is not refundable, okay? I just wanted to add that tuition and fees are refundable 100% before the beginning of the semester. After that, um, there is no refunds for fees at all. Like, they're not refundable, you have to pay everything. Um, and then, as I will mention later in the video, um, you will get a refund um, if you pay out of pocket. But I don't pay for my tuition, um, I use financial aid, so financial aid gets taken back and I'll talk more about it later in the video about the refund which you'll get a portion of your tuition refunded and then you'll still have to pay a portion which is 25% in my case. So I will have a chart up on the screen right now um, just showing you the CUNY schedule for the tuition liability and refund. Um, so I dropped my classes on that Friday um, and so that was still like the first week of school. So I was 25% liable for my tuition and I will be explaining um, all that I had to pay. Um, like really all down to the T, like all the fees and all of that stuff. I'll have it on the screen. Also, I was really confused about what tuition refund was but I ended up figuring it out so basically um, I would still get 75% tuition refund but that only applies if I had paid tuition out of pocket which I did not pay tuition out of pocket um, all of my costs were covered by financial aid so there was no tuition to refund for me um, they simply just took away my financial aid and I would just have to pay um, like around 1800 I believe that was all the final costs. Um, so that was confusing to me at first. So tuition refund is basically um, you get a portion of your tuition back. So tuition liability is the portion that you have to pay the school and tuition refund is the portion that you get back. However, in my case, I did not get any money back since I did not pay out of pocket for my costs. Um, this would only apply to people who pay out of pocket. They would get like um, 75, no, yeah, they would get 75% of their tuition back and then um, the school would just take 25% um, because the first week 
is 25% tuition liability. So I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. So now I just wanna go into how much did I owe the school? So 25% of tuition liability. Um, Baruch and a lot of other CUNY colleges, obviously they have the same tuition, the same fees. So this applies to pretty much any CUNY four-year college um, since Baruch is a four-year school. So um, this applies all across. And um, I just want to say that I am extremely, extremely, extremely lucky that I went to Baruch because if I had gone to like some, let's say, private university that has higher, higher tuition costs and higher fees, then my tuition liability would have skyrocketed. I'm so lucky that I only had to pay around um, 1800 um, around there so I'm just gonna break down the cost to you and I just have a screenshot on my phone um, and I'll just put um, the thing on the screen also okay I had to pay student senate fee which was $1.45 and then consulative fee technologies fee student activity fee undergrad degree resident so tuition costs $866.25 so I only had to pay 25% of um, my tuition and um, I also owed them a book advance charge which I did not spend. Um, they had put the book advance charge into my um, savings account which is connected. Um, and I got the book advance charge, I didn't touch it and then um, I just had to give it back to them because I have to give back my financial aid and that was part of my financial aid. So if you don't know what book advance charge is, um, it's pretty much you don't get your financial aid first, um, but they just take some money out of your financial aid um, to give you this book advance um, charge, which is to help you um, spend money on like books and all of that stuff because they're not giving you fi your financial aid yet. So all in all, I owed $1,813.85 um, that I had to pay back. And for some reason it says that it's due July 30th, 2019, but there was no like real deadline on my CUNY first that showed when I had to pay back this like fee and this like tuition liability charge. Um, so they do say when you drop um, your course or whatever that you owe them your tuition liability and also fees. So at first I thought fees were like, oh, this is the fees for me like dropping all of my courses, but no, it's your school fees. Like it's your student fees, technology fees, and you know, all of the rest of the student fees. So that's what they're saying when they're talking about fees. And fees are not refundable also. Um, and you have to cover the full amount for fees. There's not like a portion like the tuition. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers it for like how much I had to pay and um, I literally had no idea like how to pay it at first. I was like, um, there's this quick pay thing on CUNY First that I could use and um, I waited a little bit before um, the bill came out because like the bill didn't come out right away. They still needed time to process stuff and I was waiting for like the full bill um, because I think they gave me like some things that I had to pay. Like I think the fees showed up on my CUNY first, like first, and then like some other stuff showed up. So I was like, I need the full balance before I pay it in full. And I didn't want to go back to the school to pay it. Um, so I could have paid it at the Bursa's office, but I ended up just paying on quick pay. Um, I just paid from um, my checkings account. And because like credit card, there's a expensive processing fee. Anyway, on to the next one, next topic. So my financial aid for the fall semester was given back because obviously I wasn't going to school anymore and then I would just have to pay a portion of my tuition. 
and I went to the financial aid office. I talked to this lady. She told me that my financial aid would not be affected at all, but that is for a federal Pell Grant. She said that my federal Pell Grant would not be affected. I would still be getting um, financial aid like when I go back to school. And she only handles um, federal Pell Grant. The Bursaw's office handles TAP. But I did not end up going to the Bursaw's office since I was in such a sh place at that moment. Um, but financial aid lady said that you're fine um, since you just started off in the semester. It's so early. The only way that it would affect you um, would be if you like got a W or something like that. I can't remember the exact words that she said. And I didn't go to the Bursaw's office that handles TAP that day, but I ended up having my friend Michael, um, who goes to John Jay, talk to a financial aid um, person at his school. So Michael ended up telling me that my TAP would be affected. Um, they would take away all of my TAP. I would not receive TAP because I didn't go to school this semester and so I would not be TAP compliant. So to be eligible for TAP, you have to be a full-time student, and there are many other criterias. Um, so for me, I didn't go to school this semester. I was not a full-time student. Now, I really don't know if I am getting financial aid this semester because I got um, a financial aid reward thing that says that I will be receiving financial aid, but I will have to, I mean financial aid as in TAP, right? Um, I really have to see. I don't want to get my hopes up high when um, the financial aid person at John Jay said that I wouldn't be receiving TAP this semester. Um, this coming semester, hopefully I'm going to go back to school. Um, I'll be making a video about plans after leaving school, hopefully. Um, anyway, I don't know if I'm getting TAP. Um, in this reward letter, it said that I will be getting TAP because I applied to um, some schools and I did get um, financial aid reward letters. And it says that I will be getting TAP, but it's just an estimation, so it's not like, you know, um, they're gonna give it to me, absolutely. I literally have no idea. Anyway, I did see that I would have to pay like maybe 400 or something like that because probably TAP seems like it's lower for me right now because um, I usually have all of my costs paid um, and so that's weird um, but I thought that I would be having to pay like a thousand dollars or more like around there for um, if I go back to school so at this point I don't know um, because I just got that financial aid letter. The financial aid person at John Jay did tell Michael that um, my financial aid would still be the same like um, in fall 2020 and that it wouldn't affect my years of use. And I usually do get financial aid, so I'll show you how much financial aid I get. So in this email from Baruch from July, it just says how I have um, for fall 2019, $2,672.50 for federal Pell Grant and then I have an initial TAP waiver which is $466.23 and then another TAP, $1,392. That just shows for my fall. So on to the next thing, which is admissions. I obviously couldn't take a leave of absence since I literally had just um, been admitted to Baruch and I was a new transfer student. So I pretty much had to give up my um, spot. I got an admissions hold on my CUNY first. And when I click on that, it just says, that I declined Baruch, which I'll just show on the screen. And I went to the admissions office and they told me a lot about 
what was going to happen. Um, I would end up having to reapply to Baruch. So if I wanted to go back to Baruch, then um, I had to reapply to the CUNY application. If I were to apply again, um, I would have to pay all of the application costs, all of the um, transcript stuff, and so much more because when I applied to Baruch, when I was at Queensboro, um, I was a CUNY student and I was enrolled, so I did not have to pay for anything that was um, CUNY application related, and that's the great part about it. But when you're not a student, that means that you have to pay everything, and when you're not a CUNY student, also. Um, so. I will be talking about my plans after leaving college and what I've been doing and updates and all of that stuff so I don't want to give too much away in this video about my plans and that just sucks like you know going through the whole admissions process and then giving up your spot of course um, it's not like me giving up my spot that is like that um, that hard to handle. It's probably more of just like having to put in the time and effort into the essays and um, researching the colleges and all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, I think the worst part about it is probably all the costs that I had to pay. Um, but I think if I were to do it again, obviously I think I would have dropped all of my classes again like because at the end of the day money is monetary and it's a tangible thing and my health is not something that can be grabbed on for so long money is going to always be there um, but my health isn't and I am so glad that I took the time off and I'm so glad that I left Baruch and um, if I hadn't gone for those two days, I wouldn't have known what the hell was going to happen. So me going makes me realize that I shouldn't have done it. You get what I mean? Because let's say if I had not gone to Baruch and then um, just stayed home for the semester, I would have been like, I don't know if I like Baruch. Um, and then also, um, if I had stayed in the semester, it would have been bad also. Go watch the video about why I left college if you want to know more about um, the reasons. So I just want to talk about what you should expect after you leave school um, with your friends, family, and other people. So everyone pretty much thought I was still in school, you know, transferring to Baruch and all of that. And um, I think that school is really looked upon like, oh my god, this is your golden ticket to a job that's gonna pay really well, but obviously it's not. Um, and we have all these expectations and high hopes. If we go to school, we'll um, have a really good career or earn much more money and a part of it is true but a part of it is not like there's luck that goes into it and there's experience that goes into it and all of that um I think like my best friend's reaction was just like you know this is the right thing to do he sided more with the side that said don't go to school and um people around me was wondering like, oh, why didn't you go and all of that stuff. Um, but they didn't know like the real reason behind it. Like I would just be like, say something and I didn't want to like go deep into my story. And um, sometimes like they make you feel ashamed that you're not going to school or whatever. Um, like it's this huge thing. Cause I remember I told my former boss I like we all went out to dinner with the with my co-workers and then my boss was there my former boss and he said that he was not going to tell the office that I used to work at 
um, that I wasn't going to school this semester. I mean, it's okay if, you know, if you need to take a break and if you need to not do anything for the moment um, to get your rest, whatever in life that you're going through, like, obviously it's okay to be okay. I think my biggest thing in the way was my mom. Um, she wanted me to be in school, she wanted me to go this semester, and that's why I ended up going to Baruch for two days. For the most part, um, if it hadn't been for her, I would have not gone at all. And it took those two days to come back home and then I had to convince her I literally was crying and I literally felt like I was about to die. <laughs> um, more in the sense of emotionally um, physically I wasn't like in a life-threatening dire situation but somewhat felt like it emotionally I guess um, well I'm saying me medically right that it wasn't like oh I'm about to die like physically oh my gosh um, I need to go to the hospital but mentally emotionally every part of me felt like I was going to die um, and so I just was like I could not do it I was literally crying forever and ever and ever and I was like I really can't do it um, my mom's reaction was not good at all um, she went like the whole summer saying that I need to go there's no way and we would just argue and fight over it and then um, it came and then it came down to a point when um, I went back to school and then I came back home and I was just crying and she started to understand me more and she started to um, try to listen and try to go to my doctor's appointments and all of that stuff so I think that leaving school has done some benefits for me like it has helped me grow a little bit closer to my mom I feel like and um, I would say there's a huge expectation with everyone around to go back to school, finish your degree. Um, but at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, it is up to you. Um, my little sister didn't have a huge reaction. My older sister was like, "Oh, like, why aren't you in school? Um, what are you doing?" And then she just like, you know, but. Other than that, like, it's nothing too big of a deal now. Um, like, everyone knows that I'm not in school now because I have the video, and yeah. Um, I think I explained everything. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to please give it a big thumbs up and stay subscribed to my channel. Turn on the post notification bell, comment down below anything that you want, and I'll see you guys next time. I hope this wasn't too long, too boring. Um, I don't know, I hope I got everything across. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Mwah.